Hello, this is Daniel from Sound Headquarters. In today's episode, we are going to be making these really nice two-tone boucle wool panels. And these were for a private client. You can see me installing the six-foot versions there. And there's a photo of the four-foot versions on the left there. And I will show you step-by-step step how we did it. So the first thing that we're starting is by building the frame. We're starting off with two by two by eight lumber. And I'm just marking out all of my sizes for this client. For this client, we did some six foot by two foot panels. We did four foot by two foot panels and we did a couple one foot by six foot panels. So I like to mark out all of my sizes and then I'll use one length of two foot, one length of six foot and one length of one foot to match so that all of my panels are consistent with each other. So that's what I'm doing there. I'm just using that one piece as reference and getting all my pieces cut. So now I'm ready to begin screwing these panels together. I am using three inch construction screws and I am using a drill bit to pre-drill the holes there. And you can see I'm using the floor as a guide for my drill. The side of the panel frame that's facing the floor is gonna be the front of the panel. And I'm using the ground to give me a gap so that my screw holes are closer to the rear of the panel because these panels are gonna go on the router right here. And if our screws were closer to the middle or closer to the front of the frame, the router bit would hit. So here's a little zoom in angle. You can see the profile that the router gives on these frames. And this is what gives us that nice 45 degree chamfered edge on our panel frames here. So you can see I'm gonna zoom in right here. You can see that nice 45 degree edge and you can see the clearance of the screws there. It's closer to the rear of the panel so that our router bit does not catch. And we do two screws per corner, so eight screws in total for each of our panel frames, regardless of the size. We always do two screws per corner. So just going ahead and getting all of these frames routered and I do two passes on every single length. The first pass gets rid of the majority of the bulk of the wood, and then the second pass makes sure that we have a nice consistent um, cut from the router. So after the routering, just comes the sanding, and this is just to get any sort of burrs or any sort of thing that might catch when we stretch our fabric. So this is an important step. I like to use 80 grit, um, and just a light sanding, nothing too too extreme, but just once again to make sure that our fabric doesn't catch on anything once we upholster. So here I'm cutting out for the rear upholstery first, and I'm just using purple because that's what they had available at my supplier um, out of a good, a good price for me. Um, but usually we would use black or we would use um, uh, just whatever is on hand at our supplier for the rear. This is just a poly cotton blend, and we are just stapling each four corners. Uh, before I go ahead and get each length stapled on. And just light tension here, just to make sure that there's no wrinkles and the fabric lays nice and flat. And we trim off the excess. So we get all of the rear upholstery done first, so that way we have something um, to catch our acoustic insulation when we begin putting our acoustic insulation inside of these frames before we do the front fabric. So there we're cutting for our front fabric and I'm leaving a few extra inches on both sides so that the fabric has enough space to wrap around. And you can see we just put our Rockwool Comfort Board 80 acoustic insulation inside these frames. And I like to get all four corners and then do one long side and then tension the other opposite long side against that first long side before I get my short sides upholstered. And then the corners, I'll give you guys some close-ups and just some more footage there. And I have a lot of videos of me making panels. You can watch some of my other videos of how I make panels for some other closer detailed looks at how I do my corner detail and how we get the fabric to lay nice and flat. Um, but basically the strategy is that we want the rear of the panel to have any sort of wrinkles or folds or anything like that because we can always trim that off and the rear of the panel will be against the wall. It won't be visible to the clients anyways or for your own home studio. Um, so you can see there I am just getting the corners down. So getting each corner is to lay flat is the most important part because we want the front face of the panel to be seamless, right? We want everything to look nice on the visible side. And then the rear side, it's not as important if it doesn't look too, too nice on the rear side of the panel. So here I'm getting our one by four by eight lumber. Uh, this is me building the clouds for this client. We did four inch thick two by four foot clouds for this client. And we also did six foot by two foot corner traps for this client. So you can see I have the table saw set up on a 45 degree angle here because for our corner panels, all of the long lengths of wood on my corner panels, I cut on a 45 degree angle 
That way, when we mount these corner panels into a 90 degree corner in people's rooms uh, for base trapping, these panels sit nicely inside the corner and the fabric has a nice 45 degree edge to wrap around. This is just a nice attention to detail step. You can see a little close up of that 45 degree uh, profile it leaves there. This is just a detail step. It's not necessary. You can fully, the functionality is the same whether you do this step or not. If you don't have a table saw, not a big deal. You still get the full functionality out of making this style of corner trap. Now this is not a full blown, fully filled base trap. We do offer that for clients. Um, obviously that's at a higher price point and it's more permanent of a solution. Um, certain clients like things to be modular. Some clients like things to be on the cheaper side. For this particular client, he wanted things to be very modular and to be able to take everything with them to another location at a later date. Um, so that is why rather than doing fully filled out base traps um, that are a more permanent solution for my clients, we did these just four inch thick corner panels that are built on a 45 degree bevel. So here I am nailing together my cloud frames. You can see that I just use that one middle brace there in the center. And I use 16 gauge finish nails to do all of my um, nailing when I build these types of frames. And the reason why I use nails and not screws is because with straight finish nails, we have a little bit of room for adjustability if there's any sort of twist in the lumber or if there's any sort of um, just inconsistencies or irregularities in the way that the panel sits or that the way that they line up next to each other. So we can always bend the nails a little bit. We can bend the frame to readjust it. We can always hammer out the middle bracing uh, if the panels uh, need to, if the long lengths of the panels need to go in or out to match up to whatever panel is going right next to it. Um, the straight finish nails gives us that adjustability. If we use screws, that's way more rigid of a uh, fastening method. And that doesn't give us that same adjustability after the fact um, that I like to use. It just gives me that nicer attention to detail and I can get a nicer finished product when I go to install at the client's location. Um, so you can see I'm putting in the Rockwool Safe and Sound 3 inch insulation inside the frames there. And I just go around the frame and I shoot a few 16 gauge nails into all sides of the frames just to hold that insulation in place so it doesn't sag over time and sag into the fabric. Uh, which would be unsightly and give people kind of lumps in their panels and their overhead clouds. It's just not something that we like to do for our clients here at Sound Headquarters. We pay very close attention to detail. That's kind of our calling card is that we do really nice finishing work and all custom work for our clients. Um, we want our clients to be very satisfied with their room and their studio. After all, that is where they're going to be spending the time and it is for them. That's their place to be creative and that's their environment that we're trying to curate for them. So it's very important that our attention to detail um, is there for our clients. And that has just come from years of experience of me building these types of things for people. So you can see I'm just folding over the corners. Uh, these are for the, how the rear of the corner traps look. So you can see that nice 45 degree angle. That's what allows us to mount these into corners so well, into a 90 degree corner. There's a little clip of the finished panel. Th thank you guys so much for watching. This is Daniel from Sound Headquarters. Thanks. Stay tuned. Bye.